Welcome to the Cinnabar. For those of you who follow the channel, you know I've been taking gunsmithing courses down at Lassen College in California. Well, we're on a little break from school right now. It's a beautiful day out. So I thought uh, I'd throw one of my favorite Winchester to shoot this uh, Model 1894 2535 with a pistol grip and, and uh, close coupled set triggers and uh, just catch up on a little shooting that I've been missing out on while I've been going to school. In this episode, we're going we're gonna to talk about some of the things I've been doing in school. We've had some really interesting classes lately. Um, classes in, in metal preparation for, for metal finishes. And then we've done some caustic bluing. And we've done some uh, color case hardening. So both those classes were just fascinating. Both in the uh, preparations, the metal preparations for them. And in the actual bluing and color case hardening. So we're going to take you through, show you the results of some of that. I took down a couple of uh, old beater uh, Winchester 22s that we had around the ranch here. Um, I'll show you kind of some before shots of, of what the guns look like before. They've turned into some kind of long-term projects, but I'll show you what they've looked like now after getting through uh, at least the uh, finishing processes, both the, the bluing and the color case hardening. So I think this will be a fascinating episode for you. So uh, I'll break away here and uh, while I'm doing a little shooting, I'll show you kind of what, uh, what those guns look like before we, we start working on them. <laughs> so this is the rifle I chose for this week's class in metal preparation and caustic bluing. This is an old Winchester 1906-22. This is one that uh, been around the house. I've even shot some squirrels with it, and uh, it's pretty threadbare. Not much finish left on it. And you can see the stock's been broken. Had some electrical tape on it. I just peeled it off, and uh, a little bit of the wood grain came with it. So we're going to have to come up with a, a new stock. This one's kind of busted up and whatnot. But this ought to be a, a uh, kind of a fun little project this week. When we get done with it, well, we'll come back and take some after pictures for you and show you how it turned out. So I wish I'd taken a little better close-up of that 1906 so you could have seen the condition. Of course, you could tell there wasn't any finish left on it, but uh, what you couldn't really see was that there were some really deep gouges in the metal, and down both sides of the barrel, there were some really, there wasn't a lot of pitting, but there were some really deep pits. So it was really a challenge to get that, uh, that particular rifle all cleaned up and, and ready to go in the bluing tanks. And I spent all week on it, started out draw filing all those pits out, and then went to a, a coarse sandpaper to a finer and finer and finer until we finally got it polished up just right for, for bluing. It's kind of an interesting process. Um, you know, if you don't have the, the gouges or the pitch, you start off with, with uh, sanding and polishing. And you, you just go from a progressively coarser grit to a finer grit. And you change directions each time so that you can see that you're getting those, those scratches out. If there's scratches going across grain, then it's really easy to pick those up that you haven't got them all the way out. So we, we alternate 90 degrees on each grit as we go, get a little finer. And then we always um, make sure that the last pass or the last grit is perpendicular to the action in, in this direction lengthwise because that's how they, they were finished from the factory. So anything that shows is going to show just like it did from the factory. So here we'll, this next clip will show you the, uh, the result of that, that 1906, the bluing job that uh, was done on it and uh, we'll introduce you to the 1890 that we're going to do some case coloring with. So stick around while I do a little more shooting and, and check that out. Oh, that one died good. <laughs> so here's a couple of our projects from the Lassen Gunsmith School. Um, we're just finishing up this Winchester 1890 uh, slide action 22. We just went through the the uh, caustic bluing class and it turned out really nice this thing had a lot of really deep gouges and pits and we had to spend a lot of time draw filing and polishing the thing you can see that um, the one screw didn't didn't blue so we're going to have to take it out and and try to re-blue it but the rest of it turned out really nice now this week we're switching gears we're going to go into uh, color case hardening so we've got this old 1890 winchester which is basically the same thing um, just a little earlier version of this 1906. We're missing the, the trigger guard, but we're going to use this receiver to uh, color case harden. And then we'll take the rest of it, polish it up real good, and, and do a blue job on it as well. So um, 
well uh, this kind of a after photo on the, on the one and and a before on the next one later this week when we get this thing all color case hardened hopefully it comes out real pretty we'll uh, show you the results of that one well my original plan was to take that that 1906 um, caustic blue it and then take it back apart and use that same receiver for the uh, color case hardening class but the bluing turned out so good on it that I just couldn't hardly stand to to take it back apart then and, and take a chance on the color case hardening not coming out very good um, so had this old 1890 just a, a barreled action with the with the mag tubes on it and thought well I'll just take that down and, and take the receiver off of it even though the the trigger guard was missing the whole back half of the gu gun was missing um, at least I'd have some practice with color case hardening well when I got down there I was just extremely lucky that uh, one of our instructors really admires those guns and ha has done a lot of work on them and had a whole bunch of spare parts so he had all the parts I needed to put that gun back together and uh, so it worked out just beautifully that uh, he had a, a, a trigger guard that matched up perfectly with that 1890 so we got to color case harden the whole thing now I'm not going to take through step by step because it's really hard to to uh, film in class with everything going on around there and I'll, I'll admit some of the conversations from some of these young fellers in the class probably um, would jeopardize my G-rated uh, channel but um, I'll, I'll kind of explain to you the, the process of, of color case hardening and it's, it's really fascinating and it's not really fully understood uh, some of the mechanisms that, that cause that metal to, to change the colors that they do and it's it's not a sure thing sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um, so it was a lot of a lot of fingers crossed when we when we put those crucibles in the in the uh, oven and, and uh, quenched them to hope for that the colors came out the way we were expecting but anyway we take take a receiver and we go through the the polishing process that I described earlier about um, caustic bluing but it goes on further because we have to get a mirror finish so we, we take it to a much finer grit and even uh, if you're brave enough you take it over onto the the polishing wheel although if you're going to do that um, with a collector gun you better do it very very um, gingerly and lightly and, and uh, uh, that's a little terrifying to me to take off any of the any of the markings or whatnot but anyway so we take it to a, a, a mirror finish and that is a time-consuming process on an older gun that's not in very good shape like that 1890 was it took me all week long again I was all week long polishing just that receiver and trigger guard um, before I ever thought about getting it into the crucible um, and so it was Friday fri late Friday morning before I ever got it color case hardened after a whole week of, of polishing so we polish it all up and then we pack it in this crucible that we're going to put in the oven to heat up um, in a mixture of bone and wood charcoal and and suspend it in there in wire so that it's not up against anything or, or whatnot and then we put it in in the oven and cook it for and, and everybody's recipe is a little bit different the the, the bone and charcoal mix uh, or the bone and, and wood charcoal mix the amount of time that's in the oven the temperature it's in the oven so it's really a um, almost an art rather than a science and then when we get done then we immediately take that crucible out and and quench it in water and we're going to that's what's up next we're going to show you that process um, after everything else has been done and it's been cooked off we'll show you the quenching process and then the big reveal it's kind of like Christmas morning when we get it out of the uh, the crucible and, and in and, and pull it out of the of the wire hangers and, and see what we've got really a, a fascinating process and really a heck of a lot of fun so while I do a little more shooting we'll watch my my good friends uh, Shane and, and Casey as they get theirs out <laughs> oh, over the top this thing's shooting high Probably because I'm standing so close to it. Ready? Ready. Okay, here we go. Oh, what? Hit it again! Oh, this is going to hit it again. Woo! Okay, now you can set it in here. <laughs> 
Oh, shit. So the next guy is up. Do a little practice swing with you beforehand so you can just slam it down the first time. Yeah, when in doubt, hit it again. <laughs> oh, come on. Squish, <laughs> squish. Always check, always check things with the back of your hand. You could just leave it there. We can do a reveal simultaneously. Okay. Sure. Oh, there we go. Get some. Huh? Okay. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you got some. No rush. I felt it though, I felt the reaching. That actually looks pretty good. Oh, that's fantastic. Alright, Shane, let's awesome, see it. Awesome, beautiful. Wow. Okay, there's the next one. Oh, shit, oh, shit. Oh, Whoa. Oh, 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 damn. That's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> my. Yeah. Oh, no, I think shit. they both look great, man. They both great. look excellent. Yeah. Look at that. That's, yeah. yeah that's, well wow. done, fellas. Yeah. Alright. Well, Shane and Casey's color case hardening turned out just beautiful but it had me a little nervous because as pretty as they were they really didn't look a lot like uh, Winchester's factory color case hardening so I was really concerned then after after their quench and and seeing how they had colored that mine would look similar and wouldn't look really like factory so let's take a look now we'll, we'll uh, see mine had to go in a, in a much bigger crucible um, because I put the the receiver and the trigger guard together so it wouldn't fit one of the small crucibles. It was just a little too big. So mine was a little more of a challenge. I had to manhandle mine a little bit more. And uh, throughout the process, I was a little nervous about just dropping the whole thing on the ground because you've just got a, a short time frame when you get it out of the oven and get it over and get it quenched. And you fiddle around, roll it around out there on the pavement and expose it to air and whatnot. Not a really good thing. So let's check out how, how mine turned out. That was really something there, Mark. <laughs> hey, mission accomplished, though. Well met. I'm just going to keep going and catch this whole process here, Mark, huh? Okay. Wow. Made a mess. We can just kind of toss those bars aside. Something. That that right side of the receiver. Look at look at the blocking it. <laughs> yeah, the block it always, yeah. it always does that. Oh, that that lightning bolt on the side. That's something. Yeah. That the screen <laughs> fly, right? Well, I just couldn't be happier with the way this receiver turned out. Just look at that. Just some beautiful, beautiful case colors on this thing. Now it's time to uh, take out the blocking and. Uh, Put a little coat of Renaissance wax on it to protect it. See, we made these blocks, milled them out to, to protect the tangs and the receiver from warping and on, under all that heat. Um, so we'll take those out. This uh, Renaissance wax is really to protect the finish. You know, case colors 
um, it's, it's just not a real durable finish. It's, it's uh, real susceptible to fading. UV light affects it, fades it out. Um, carrying, touching with your hands, carrying the receiver around um, will make the, the colors fade. So it's really good to have some kind of protectant on it. And I think I've heard back in the day that they used a, like a clear lacquer to, to protect the finish. Now we have this Renaissance wax and our uh, instructors talk about using uh, clear Cerakote over the top, which is uh, interesting. That might be an excellent protectant. Um, so I'm kind of thinking about that. I haven't decided yet. I might let uh, some of my classmates are talking about using some clear Cerakote, see how theirs turn out before I decide whether to uh, put that Cerakote on this. So there's that, the one block, you see it colored up real nicely. Um, get this, this one out of the tangs here. And, uh, you know, this project, it, it started out just a, an old beater gun that uh, I could get a little practice color case hardening on. And now that it's turned out so well, I think I've got a long-term project on my hands. I'm probably in the market for some deluxe wood for it. And and uh, we'll probably uh, go ahead and, and slow rust blue all the, all the blue parts. Um, so this ought to be real fun. I mean, this could turn into a, just an absolutely beautiful little rifle um i think uh we have a stock making class in the spring and and uh, a slow rust blue class coming up in the, in next fall so it is a, a long-term project but as we go along we'll kind of show you guys how how we're uh, progressing on this thing so there we are we've got the blocking out we've got our our beautiful case colored winchester 1890 well, thanks for joining us. This has been uh, great fun for me. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.